Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 3rd, 2016, and this is the week in charts. This week's week in charts, once again, is brought to you by me. I started this, I made this ad beginning of last year, and I kind of like it. I actually did it myself, believe it or not. Uh, so far, it has not been proven wrong. It's been a pretty bumpy year. But the good thing is, as you'll see in the portfolio, we've been able to navigate the waters Knock a wood, so far, so good. So at the end of the show, I'll show you how to get this for free, at least a delayed version. And if you want to watch it in real time, so where you can actually take advantage of some of these things, you can join for as little as $47. You can go to store, or you can go to that link there. Disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading. Or, as I like to say, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then so i'm thinking let's just dive in today i sometimes i spend too much time talking about what i'm going to talk about so let's just dive in letters we do get letters so the following is a an email thread that i received oh i guess about a week ago regarding uh some action that i was uh, talking about in the service robert says dave i don't stand with your view of the market and the current high correlation between the market and oil, how there could be a current opportunity for buying CENX. The trend is down, and you are expecting an emerging uptrend in oil. Why not wait for CENX to actually break out and start a new uptrend and then buy it on a pullback? Okay. My answer was trend transitional pattern. Energy stocks are turning up. Yes, more risky, but with risk comes reward. And he said, I meant CNX, which is actually an energy stock, but same applies to CENX as it is a commodity. And to that, I replied, CNX could trade conscious of the market. Each position is an independent event. If it doesn't make sense to you, then ignore it. Cheers. Now, before I go much further, because there's a lot I want to talk about here, and there's some more thread coming, but keep in mind that I'm not here to sell you on whether or not you should buy or sell short a stock, okay? My job is to educate you on why I like this particular stock. Now, I do put in an exact entry, an exact stop, and an exact initial profit target. Obviously, you could use a little discretion, and, and I do preach and teach that, and that does make things work better. In fact, it's kind of funny, right, as I was getting ready to start the show, I was thinking, uh, I have a friend who's who's a professional trader. He's well-known. He's written books, and um, I can't say his name, obviously. But he was impressed that I actually have a trading service where I actually make direct recommendations and try to show people how to follow along. And he's he was like, wow, that's just really hard to, to do that for others. And, and that's sort of a – that's my goal, obviously, and I enjoy doing that. It, it's fun especially when things work out. Anyway, so I followed up with another. Um, the audio is working here. Um, sometimes a squirrel gets his uh, nuts caught in the wires somewhere between me and you. Karen, where are you? You're not in, a, you're in New York. So lots of trees and squirrels between us and you, me and you. Anyway, so in a follow-up email, I said, okay, uh, Metals turn into corner two. Also, commodities can trade contra the market. So I kind of saw oil and commodities as kind of all just commodities. and that So the confusion between CENX and CNX really doesn't matter. But the metals and mining have been bottoming out. We're going to take a look at that. And we're also going to talk about, as I said, commodities can trade contra to the market. Craig says the squirrel is fine. Craig is the... Uh, Entrepreneur of Barking Squirrel Coffee. Give you a little free plug there, Craig. Craig's on the service, so one hand uh, washes the other, I suppose, or you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Robert says, hmm, my point is buying CNX is directly contrary to your view of the market and the rest of the portfolio. Well, energies and commodities, again, could trade contra to the overall market. And his point is that the rest of the portfolio is shorts and the pattern is a breakout pattern. Well, it's a trade transitional pattern. And I, I hear you to the rest of the world, which is much riskier than a pullback. And it is. And the reward comes most likely only if you get stopped out on all your other positions. Well, not so fast. 
it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get stopped out on your shorts just because a long begins to work. Now, before we get into that, one thing you have to be careful about when it comes to markets is, as I was reading in Thinking Fast and Slow, it's a book I would recommend you read, something I've been putting off forever to get around and read and finally started reading it. And he talks a lot about, or the authors, I should say, talk a lot about what you see is all there is. So you can't make an observation and say, well, the market is going down because oil is going down. And if oil goes up, the market will go up. Now, the media is guilty, very guilty of making those suppositions. And what else would the media say if they didn't? Think about it. Uh, today, the market went up because there was demand. And then tomorrow, if the market goes down, today, the market went down because there was supply. Now, they've, they've got to make it interesting. They go, oh, oil's going up. Or oil's going down. So market's going down. Seems like a few years ago, anybody remember 2008? Oil's going straight up. Oil's going up. So market's going down. Wait a minute. Which is it? Okay. Now, I know within a market technical analysis, they can get out of phase, and it only matters when it matters. But you can't, you can't try to factor all that into your trading. It's okay to observe all that, but the bottom line is you have to ask yourself, what would Steve Winwood do? And I'm dating myself here. And Steve Winwood says, when you see a chance, you take it, Okay. Now, that doesn't mean go willy-dilly and buy every stock you see. But if you see a stock that can, and can be in a keyword in that sentence, trade contra to the market or a sector that trade, trade contra to the market, and then a setup within that sector in a good-looking stock, and you ask yourself, can I pass on this setup and live with myself? If the answer is yes, then don't take it, okay? But if it's a good-looking setup, and I guess I should say, if you see a great chance, then you take it. We could pay to put money into harm's way. Now, one thing that Robert kind of got me thinking about is, if you kind of read into what he's saying, it kind of comes back to, it makes you wonder at least, is, is he wondering if we're doing like a hedge or something? Because he's saying, well, if the shorts go up, I'm sorry, if the longs go up, then the shorts go down, then shorts, the profit-wise, you're going to lose money in the shorts. And that's not always the case. But the bottom line is we're not hedging. So I don't want anyone to think that the fact that we're buying some selected stocks right now, even though I still think the market's in trouble, which I'm going to flesh out in just a few minutes, that doesn't mean that I'm trying to hedge. Now, I don't want to get into a long diatribe on hedging. And it's not my way or the highway. And it's kind of kind of interesting. I, I had these strong feelings about hedging. And then recently I learned someone about someone who was doing something that actually works, but for them. Before we get to that, keep in mind that a hedge, if you're trying to hedge your position, that means you have something in your portfolio that has negative correlation to your portfolio. And it has to, otherwise it wouldn't be a hedge. So let's say your hedge goes up, so you make money on that. But that means that your portfolio is going down. So you're going to lose money on that, okay? Now let's say just the opposite happens. Let's say that your portfolio goes up, so you're making money here. But that means that your hedge is going down, okay? So you're losing money here. So net net it ends up being a wash. And not only that, let's say you're using some sort of option strategy to hedge. Well, there's a decay in those options, so you're constantly eroding your portfolio away. Now, again, it's not my way or the highway. I'm friends with Larry McMillan and uh, I talked to him a little bit over Traders Expo, but and I I, I reiterated the, the conversation or we talked a little bit more about it. But the time before I saw him at um, an AAPTA meeting or somewhere, we, we were talking about the way that he has an option strategy, a very specific option strategy, and he has a hedge. But the hedge is not to try to control every zig and every zag 
And I forget the exact amount, but it might be like after a 6% loss, the hedge begins to kick in. So he's almost guaranteed a 6% loss before the hedge kicks in and starts working again. Now, Larry has dedicated his life to trading options, Larry McMillan. And there's a lot of Larrys in this business in there. And he's actually literally written the book on options. I remember stuck on a tarmac years ago with um, Larry's book. And I was just like diving in, covered calls. Wow, this is fascinating. And everybody else was getting all frustrated all around me. They thought I was probably reading War and Peace or some novel or something. <laughs> Things about 20 pounds, <laughs> you know. But the point is that Larry knows what he's doing. And Larry spent his entire life to understand options. And if you have a model that has a quote unquote hedge in it, that's fine. But as a general statement, hedging is a bad idea. And if, if someone tells me, someone who trades like outright stocks tell me they hedge, I, I kind of roll my eyes. I mean, I wait for them to walk away before I roll my eyes. I just kind of listen and say, that's nice, you know, which is Southern for, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> Anyway, so we're not trying to hedge by buying some longs while we're short. And again, keep in mind that the portfolio, each individual position could trade independently of the overall market too. And I'm going to talk about that in just one second. Before we get to that though, keep in mind with transitional patterns, there's a chance that you can be right big and wrong small. Let's say a market comes down, bottoms out, and you get a nice little bow tie or something, a little bit of a pullback, and you get in right here somewhere, okay? Like Robert says, yeah, that's a bit of a breakout, but you've got a big picture pattern behind you, and you got your bow tie working and everything else, so it's a calculated risk, and you're actually getting in a little bit before that breakout, and if the breakout player's screens get flashing alerts, that breakout will help to boost your position along, and that might be enough to get you up to your partial profits, okay? And if that happens, then you bump your stop to break even and ride the position out. And I'm going to pull the chart here in a few minutes and show you that. So with a transitional pattern or an emerging trend pattern, there's a chance to be right big and only be wrong small. So, again, if you're getting into this position – way down low somewhere, like right here. Let me draw that a little bit better. Let's say you've got a position that just kind of comes down and bottoms out for a long, long time, or I should say a, a setup, and then it pulls back a little bit. You get your little bow tie or your first thrust or whatever the set it, setup is. Also looks like a saucer and handle, cup and handle, something like that, whatever you want to call it. And you get your entry. If this triggers an entry and comes back down and makes new lows, you're wrong. So this is your maximum amount to let the position prove whether it's wrong or not. And in reality, you'll probably get out a little bit before it goes all the way back to the old lows. But if you're proven right, there's a chance that this stock might go back up to its old highs. And that might be five or 10 times where the price is. So it's worth a shot. Now, keep in mind, and I do always say, oh, but Dave, don't you always say obsessed before you get into trade, not afterwards? Yes, I do. And I fully believe that you should, but obsess first on the pattern first and foremost. And if you like the pattern, then go with it, okay? But keep in mind, again, when, I, when I'm obsessed, I'm saying also make sure is the market headed in the same direction? Is the individual sector heading in the same direction? And is the stock obviously also headed in the same direction? One, two, three. Well, sometimes you don't get all that, especially with transitional patterns. Sometimes you just get a stock that sets up nicely. It's oversold for years or months or whatever the case may be. And then all of a sudden it sets up nicely and looks fantastic. And the sector might not be there and the overall market might not be there. Okay. Now, again, I don't want to confuse things too much because with commodities, oil, base metals, gold, silver, I'm not so worried about the overall market. But it would be nice if the sector also confirmed. And right now it does. Now, so your stars won't always align nearly as much with the trend resumption pattern. For those who are new to the methodology, trend resumption is just I recognize a trend. I could draw a big arrow on my chart, and then I get the pullback, and I'm looking to get long. 
this is a trend resumption. You first have to have a trend, and then you're looking to get on that trend on a resumption of the trend. Okay. A trend transition or emerging trend is when you have a stock that's at low, low levels, and then it begins to come off those levels and show some sort of bottoming action. Okay. Now, you are a bit of a pioneer, as I'll talk about in one second, too. I don't get too far ahead of myself. But the fact that the stars aren't fully aligned yet and the stock looks good in and of itself as a standalone setup, when you see a great chance, you take it, okay? What happens is sometimes the stars begin to line align after the fact and that is what really begins to push your position higher so your stock begins to take off and then all of a sudden the overall sector begins to take off and then sometimes speaking usually of non-commodity related areas sometimes the overall market begins to take off so that the piece is not all fitting just yet can actually be a positive thing and as those pieces begin to fit the stocks go higher and higher and higher okay now again if you are trading an emerging trend pattern or a trend transitional pattern I haven't decided what to call them I, I used to always call them trend transitions last couple of years for some reason I'm calling them emerging trends and I think emerging trends makes more sense with more people So you have to remember, like the American pioneers, sometimes you get the gold and sometimes you get the arrows. But the way I see it is the chance of the gold makes it all worthwhile. Now, getting back to the current portfolio, whenever you take a, whenever you take a position, make sure you see it to fruition. That's going to be a famous Dave Landry quote. I guess plan your trade and trade your plan is already taken. So I'll have to noodle with that a little bit, but you'll probably see that in the list of Dave's quotes. Whenever you take a position, make sure you see it to fruition so the whole the same thinking goes for the entire portfolio we put on these positions and we manage each one to fruition okay in other words we plan the trade and we trade the plan it's kind of interesting and somebody's gonna think I'm picking on them but I'm not because this this is such a common email all right, we're going to take profits if it hits seven, okay? Everybody cool with that? Yeah, yeah, okay. I see it in a spreadsheet if it hits seven. Stock hits seven. And sometimes even closes above seven. Next day. Dave, uh, the stock hit seven yesterday. Should I have taken profits? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the plan. So no matter what the plan is, and even if you can't write your own plan, which is fine, or just don't have time to, there's nothing wrong with that. Somebody emailed me yesterday and said, hey, Dave, I'm a busy guy. I travel a lot. I don't have time to do all this work you talk about. I'm like, that's fine with me. You're you're a, a client that I love. I mean, I love the clients out there that are also doing the homework, and we compare notes, and sometimes we agree to disagree, like, uh, like my buddy Phil. Phil, you're in here. Raise your hand. I'll say hello. But that's okay if you're out saving lives and building buildings or – Repairing automatic transmissions. You don't have time to do all these things. That's fine with me. I'm doing all the work anyway. Come along. Okay. So we plan to trade a trade a plan. I could put that plan together for you. Or you could study all my stuff on my website. Watch the wedi uh, weddios. Watch the webinars. Come to these uh, live webinars. Watch the videos, I think is what I'm trying to say. And do it yourself. And especially with a, especially with a transitional setup, one big winner pays for them all. Now I've heard this many a times, but 
the, what comes to mind more recently would be Sakoda, and if you look at the like videos on my website, uh, somewhere in there, or I should say like videos on YouTube, I, I liked his little, uh, his little Whipsaw song, which he played to us in person at the, um, one of our meetings one year, American Association of Professional Technical Analysts. So keep in mind that getting back to the current portfolio, sometimes we'll end up with both longs and shorts living together and working quite nicely. So let's take a look at portfolio and that'll make a little bit more sense. Now, a couple of weeks ago, somebody said, hey, Dave, uh, I see you got this position in here, MOH, and your stop is at 62, and right now it's at 60. I bet it's going to get stopped out over the next few days. Should have just bail out and save $2. And my answer was no, and we did. We followed up on this in a couple of webinars. The reason is because you never know when one of these open positions, and I'm going to explain this portfolio in just a minute. I'm getting a lot of questions from people on a portfolio, so we'll explain it here in just one second. Or I'll explain, I should say. But the second half of this position, this could turn out into a very big winner, okay? Just like this one here, CENX. If this keeps running, maybe that will turn into a very big winner. We're going to see each position to fruition. Now, like Robert said, could that mean we get stopped out of our longs and, I'm sorry, shorts and the, and the longs take off? Well, as we say in Fargo, you betcha. Absolutely. But the chance exists for one of these existing positions, long or short, to become the mother of all winning trades. And hopefully a year from now, I'll pull the, I'll pull the portfolio up, as I often do, and I'll say, hey, remember this uh, CENX or CNX or whatever we're talking about? Notice that it's up several hundred percent. If we were to micromanage ourselves out of it, we'd no longer be in it. Now, I don't want to go back to a lesson of micromanagement, although I will touch upon it again in just a few minutes in a couple of slides. But you have to just see things through, not think too much, and then let it all unfold. Because... Micromanagement will pay off over the short term, and it will pay off quite often over the short term. Again, the market's a bad teacher. But longer term, it will not pay off because you're going to miss those occasional home runs, those occasional big winners that are very important. And when you have a chance to make a lot of money by sticking with a position, you have to do it. And quite frankly, sometimes it sucks because you have to give up open profits and get stopped out. But that's okay. So let's say you give up open profits. Let's say you were up 50% and you stop out only up 30%. Well, did your account get bigger? Did the position work? Yes. As I say a thousand times, nobody seems to be amused anymore, but whenever somebody emails me pissed off because they gave up some open profits because my stop was where it was, I just say, look, just email, email me. <laughs> uh, Mail me the money, mail me the money, and go center yourself and forget about it. Just, you know, get some little aromatherapy or whatever it takes. Forget about the position. If it's stressing you out that you made money on a position, two things. One, you shouldn't be trading. And two, just send me the money and go relax. I've yet to receive a dollar in my, uh, in my mailbox just yet. Okay. Uh, real quick. We, we've been through this a thousand times, so let me just go through this real quick because it, no matter how many times I've been through I'm getting a lot of questions, I would recommend you go back and look at the webinars that I've done, and I'll show you the video page on my website in just one second for that. But let me just walk you through what's going on here. This is all a hypothetical 100K account, okay? Now, some of the numbers in here might be actual real trade. Some of the numbers in here might be time and sales, but I try to keep these numbers as realistic as possible. But for legal purposes, everything we do here is hypothetical and for educational purposes only, okay? So we start with 100K, and it's always 100K. We may be losing money on the portfolio, but when we go to take a new position to keep the math easy, we assume we have 100K in the portfolio. We might be doing okay like this year where we have more than 100K in the portfolio, the model portfolio, but we're still going to take a 100K position. So we're not going to compound or anything like that. 
we want to keep it real simple so people can follow along. And obviously, if they want to compound, they be the clients or do whatever they want, that's fine. And I'll give you this actual spreadsheet with all the formulas and everything ready to go. 2% per trade, 2% times 100K is how much? $2,000. Now, we take that $2,000 and this column here, somebody just asked me, what is this column? This is your initial risk or goal, slash goal. So if we're using a four-point stop, our initial profit target is four points. I did two complete webinars on negative expectancy and how it does not have a negative expectancy. And the quick answer on that is because hopefully you make many times the amount on the second part of the position. So you take this 2,000 divided by where your stop is. Dave, how do you set the stop? Well, it depends on the volatility of the market. So you'll notice those low priced, super duper volatile stocks have incredibly wide stops, but that's what they call for. And again, go through as many of the we could chart webinars as you could stand. We did cover stops quite a bit. Now, we divide the position into two lows, so to speak, a trading loaf and a trending loaf. So if we're risking four points, 2,000 divided by four, what does that come to? 500 shares. So we split that into a trading loaf and a trending loaf. So you notice that the share size varies quite a bit. We don't use a fixed stop and we don't use a fixed share size. Okay. We look to take profits where we're up 1% on the port on the uh, 100K. We get a $1,000 profit. And then we look to sometimes we get a little bit more, sometimes we get a little bit less, as you can see. And then we look to trail on the remainder. And that'll make more sense when we take a look at the actual position here for hopefully to be in that position for a long, long time. So this is the day that it's set up, not necessarily the trigger day. This is how much we're risking and our initial goal, long or short, minus one is a short, one is a long. And that's just the formula to make the math work when we come to make our profit calculations. If it's minus one, then we subtract this from this. If it's plus one, then we subtract this from this. Hopefully that makes sense. We subtract this from this. If it's a minus because it's a short, we want the market to go down. And then we subtract this from this if it's a long because the market wants to go up. We want the market to go up. Okay. So as you can see, we have shorts and longs living in harmony. We're not trying to hedge by having some longs so they can go up as our shorts go down. So Robert's point was, why buy longs if you're going to lose money on your shorts? And we don't know. Margin call. We don't know if we're going to lose money on the shorts. We hope that every position does great longer term. And we're in for a penny in for a pound. Once we get a, once a position's into the portfolio, we ride it out to fruition. Now, here's a CNX trade, just so you know. This one's a little bit more wide and loose. The other one's a little bit cleaner. But if you have a very good trained eye, you could probably see. I know somebody like Phil's probably looking at the head and shoulder bottom here. We had a bow tie here. And it just looked like a major bottom, especially if you back the chart way out. You could see this stock headed lower for a long, long time. So I thought it was worth a shot as a buy. Now, it's a little choppy, but that's okay because it's a commodity-related stock. If this was some non-commodity-related stock, we're looking at one right now. It's a bit of an IPO. Uh, we're going to be a, we're a little bit more picky with that one than we are with this one. Now, if you go to the CENX, notice that we had our bow tie here, and then we had an entry here. We gave a little bit of wiggle room. And so far, now Robert said, aren't you a breakout trader? Well, not really. We're getting in before the official breakout, which is right here. And hopefully that breakout is enough to push us up to the initial profit target as it did. And as you can see, it pulled back a little bit in here. We trailed that stop up to break even. And we took some partial profits, okay? Go back and look at the spreadsheet. Watch the recording of this, and you'll see. You can go back and see how it all played out. And now we're going to trail a stop higher and hopefully be with this position for a long, long time. Now, getting back to the risk versus reward, even if you put a stop weight out here, this is your potential risk. 
and your potential war reward is something much bigger than that. So I'm kind of talking about six different concepts at once. Number one, see a setup you take it. Number two, with transitional setups, you have a chance to be right big. You're a pioneer, okay? Number three, ride the position to fruition. It's getting harder and harder to say that. Good, bad, or indifferent. Now, here's one thing I was thinking about right as I was getting ready to start my webinar. I kind of put this slide in the last minute. We've been talking a lot about how the market could be a bad teacher. Last week or week before, the MOH stopped out. You would have saved $2 by, by getting out early. Well, the market will often reward bad behavior, okay? Let's say you get into a position and you get stopped out to the penny and then the market takes off without you. You cuss and fuss and then three days later or a week later, the same thing happens again. Then the market takes off without you. So what do you do? Well, I'm not going to use stops anymore. I even get emails sometimes from people, from quote unquote gurus. I get spam saying, don't use stops. Come to my webinar. Stops are for losers. Yeah, right. That'll work until it don't. So what happens when you go to that third trade or that fourth trade? You say, you know what? I'm not using a stop. I'm not going to get fooled again. Okay. Well, the market drops through your stop and it keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping. So the first thing about trading is you have to reward yourself or feel good or have you want to look at it. You have to feel good if you're doing the correct process, regardless of the outcome. So you must be process oriented. You could make a lot of money gambling on a trade. Did you do the smart thing? Probably not. Okay. You can make a lot of money not honoring your stops. Did you do the right thing? No, because sooner or later, you're going to get wiped out by not honoring your stops. So you have to be process-oriented versus outcome-oriented. We set that plan into motion ahead of time, and then we follow the plan. Now, we do take a little bit of action by taking those partial profits when we're hitting that initial profit target. Knock on wood, thank God, however you want to look at it, if blessed with that profit. And then we do occasionally adjust that trailing stop higher. Hopefully, we adjust to get adjusted quite often to gradually ride out, or I should say we gradually loosen it to, to hopefully ride out what will turn into a longer-term trend. Okay. All right, some questions are coming in. Don says, do you begin each day, trading day with a bias, from your analysis of the indices and sectors, for example, direction of bias, long or short? I used to, okay? Very, very early in my trading markets days when I first went public, and I forget if it was, I want to say, geez, I don't even remember. Was it 97 or 98? And I was doing a lot of research on short-term systems, both for my own use, and Larry Connors had me doing some research for him too back then. So it was kind of cool. I was getting – Larry was paying me to research for him, and I was doing my own research. And some of my stuff actually uh, was able to help his stuff along, and vice versa, obviously. And I found myself getting caught up in the minutia of the market. So if the market was oversold, I was always looking for a reversal. If the market was – if the market was overbought, I was always looking for a reversal. And then I was always paying attention to these very short-term – systems based on indices and VIX and all these other things. And then I decided at some point just to kind of pay attention to the big picture. So right now, as we'll see in just a few minutes, it hasn't been preaching at nausea ever since last August. We have a sell signal in the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. So if you have to label me, label me bearish. I've been bearish. So I don't come in on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and say, oh, I'm no longer bearish or bullish. No longer, uh, I'm going to flip a switch because the market's overbought or market's oversold. I just continue to follow along. And yes, I know that some of my positions will get whacked. Some of them might do okay because I, I, it's not like I've forgotten how to time the market shorter term. I just realized that if you're not careful, that type of analysis can can be a hindrance to you. You don't see the trees. You don't see the forest for the trees if you're busy looking at the trees. Hopefully that made sense. 
So no, I don't change the bias on a day-by-day -day basis. But if the market goes on and starts making new highs, all-time highs, then I will be forced to reevaluate the trend. Okay. Coffee's on its way. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. Looking forward to it. Howard said, is the transition, the period of trading time between the phases of accumulation, markup, and distribution or decline? Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, somebody was asking me that at Traders Expo. Uh, 2015, was that a distribution year? I'm not sure where everybody sounds like Henry Kissinger. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. It was a, a consolidation, okay? Uh, with a lot of transitional patterns, you'll have a big base. If you want to call it distribution, that's fine. Um, as I've talked about, when I talk about like the Phoenix strategy, what happens is when a stock falls from high levels, let's see if we can get a, a thing up. When a stock falls from high levels and has done so for a long, long time and then begins to bottom out and has done so for a long, long time, that a lot of things happen during this sideways consolidation, distribution, whatever you want to call it, okay? God forbid some people die, their kids get the estate, they immediately sell it all off, okay? So that selling happens somewhere in here. Uh, somebody gets a divorce, that selling somewhere, happens somewhere in here. And sometimes their selling happens on the way down. They realize that junior can't go to... Um, What's that college? I was talking with somebody over the weekend. Uh, William Mary, Mary something. It's one of the most expensive colleges in the world because their daughter wants to go to Tulane. I'm like, good Lord. I was Googling expensive colleges to make a point in my, uh, in my blog the other day or article, whatever you want to call it. And William Mary, Mary William something came up as, as one of the most expensive schools. Then it was like Tulane. Then it was like Harvard, then Tulane or Tulane, Harvard. I forget. So anyways, daughter wants to go to Tulane. But the thing is, let's say you have money for Tulane here, and all of a sudden stock, this market or stock begins to drop. Well, you have to reevaluate whether or not your kid's going to go to community college or still be able to go to Tulane or whatever. Okay, So that washes its way through the system. The company might reinvent itself. Uh, with the solar stocks, as I said a while back, sometimes the energy of the future is always the energy of the future, but then they become viable or something happens. So you're looking for some sort of transitional pattern. Now, what you call this does not matter. Okay, it's kind of like what you call me doesn't matter as long as you don't call me late for dinner. So don't get too caught up in accumulation, distribution, and whatever the other one is. And early in my career, I read all these books. In fact, when I had a day job, I would uh, – I probably shouldn't say this. I don't want their money back, but I would go uh, – I would go photocopy about 10 pages of a book when nobody was around and I'd stick it. I'd put one page in my desk and I'd, I'd read one page at a time. <laughs> and then if somebody walked in, I'd crumple it up, throw it away. Like, Hey, through with that, doing my paperwork here. Can I help you? Um, so back when I did a lot of those studies of like, aha, accumulation, distribution. Ah, this makes a lot of sense. Okay. And then it took me a long time, but then I said, oh, is the market going up? Is the market going down? Is the market going sideways? What you call it does not matter, okay? Okay. Um, I don't know if I have this link blatantly on my website, but uh, if you do want to follow along on a delayed basis, you can go to this uh, place here, and you can see all my picks, warts and all. I don't do free trials anymore. I haven't done them in probably 10 years. It's like free trial. It's like, Dave, can I have a free trial? Yeah, here's your free trial. A month later. What'd you think? Oh, I didn't get around looking at it. Can I have another free trial? Okay, there you go. <laughs> a month later. What'd you think? Oh, I didn't get around looking at it. <laughs> so if you want to look at it, you can look at a delayed basis. All right? If you can't afford the service, maybe you need to think twice about trading or you need to just see the service as tuition to learn how to trade. And, that, and that's fine with me too. Okay. We don't, we're not all born with a, a bunch of money in our pocket, but yeah, if you go here, you can get the service for free, obviously on a delayed basis. Now, one thing I've been working on lately uh, is the, is the website. It's kind of interesting that people, I'm getting emails like Dave, where are your random thoughts? Do you hide them now? 
and and no uh, if you go to the website the top menu under blog random thoughts are right there I think the rest of these are self-explanatory too and also if you scroll down to the bottom of the home page my latest content I hate the word blog for some reason I like an article okay so here's my latest article here's my latest podcast and here's last week's the week of charts so that content will always be at the bottom of the page and last week I tried to show the video page it was a little slow to load because of go to webinar uh, makes it kind of complex but if you click on videos I finally have begun to organize so these are all the week of charts starting with the most recent and then I have some playlists down here too so these are YouTube playlists the market in a minute some trading lessons special market updates and this is uh, things that I've done with other people or videos that I like and then these are some other videos I have organized in here I did some how-to videos and some interviews and stuff so tons and tons of content on there and then always you could join my YouTube channel where there's 1500 more so check that out when you get a chance so that's the that's where the videos are and then on the video page I went ahead and put the blog down here because just in case I don't get around to posting the video at the top the latest videos will always be under blog and that'll be on the bottom of the home page and the bottom of the video page and then obviously marketing minutes and the market in a minute still okay Trump University how is your trailing stop manually done or percent or dollar amount the trailing stop is based on once we hit, once we get it's it's almost one for for okay for educational purposes which all this is anyway right but the easiest way to explain it is on the first half of the position where we have a full position on it's almost one for one so if the stock goes up one point we're going to bring up that stop one point so it's one for one okay now in more recent times i've been a little bit more lax than that and i'm not bringing it up as much as i used to be i used to trail it seriously very seriously on a one for one basis now i'm a little bit slower in trailing it now if we hit the initial profit target what happens is we then bring the stop up to break even so here's your trailing stop here and notice that I kind of drew it kind of stair stepped higher and let's say we hit the initial profit target well you're gonna run this stock stop up to break even in fact if we go look at the example from earlier notice that okay well we start trailing this stop kind of one for one all of a sudden we hit the initial profit target we want to run that stop up to break even okay I don't have it exactly to scale but you get the idea and then we want to let it slowly wide now now here's the the, the art of it more than a science if it doesn't really work with a low price example let's say we're at a 20 30 dollar stock and, and it goes let's say the stock goes up three points well, we might only raise our stop one point and we're gaining one point of ground or let's just say two points. Let's say it goes up three. Let's say this is a three point move and we raise our stop two points. So we're gaining two points of ground, but we let that stop open up a point. And as I preach quite a bit, again, go and look, go and look at the videos, tons of content there. But sometimes I'll do like what I call keep the change. Let's say a stock goes from 30 to thirty dollars and thirty five cents well I'll just forget about it I won't even bother to bump my stop up thirty five cents and in doing so that stop begins to widen out and we're making that transition from the short term trader to the longer term trader okay uh, where can I find recorded webinar if I want to watch it again go to videos page and also make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel it's free and it doesn't you don't get spam or anything from it uh, you just get uh, I guess like if you have a phone app you get a notification when there's a new video up there so as soon as I get through with this webinar I'm gonna hit a button it's gonna process and I'll start the upload so in about three hours from now uh, it'll be it'll be uh, or two hours from now it'll be live thanks for your interest Rob says just want to be aware of a go to webinar issue since I can't get sound for go to webinar through this laptop I have to call him on a cell phone. My phone connection was lost within 60 seconds twice. Call from Nashville. Okay, Rob. Um, 
for the most part, GoToWebinar is very robust, but it's good to it's good for you to let me know that um, there's so many issues when it comes to internet. I mean, it, it, who knows? I mean, I've got two broadband lines here, and every day at 8:30, they seem to both go down right as the damn market opens. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's so many things that could go wrong. So I kind of give GoToWebinar a pass because it's 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 pretty damn impressive. And if you were to try to get an account, um, now it's ridiculously expensive, and I know why. I know why it's so much. Play short, bounce off. Okay, we'll get to that, Craig. I'm gonna take a stab at your name. I can't see because I don't have my glasses. I better not. Srinivasa. 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 I hope I got that close to being right. You're welcome. Okay. So again, just getting back to the, uh, let me just make sure we close the loop on the website. So on the home page, I'm gonna try to keep this content fairly uh, stable. So the home page is not gonna change much, but what'll happen towards the bottom is any new content will come in. Now what you'll see up top is going to be like, if I have any special reports or anything like that, it'll be, uh, it'll be published up there, okay? And then again, just poke around a little bit if you don't mind. Hey, I got my name. I got you. Uh, all right, I was able to do it. I don't have my glasses today, so it's really hard to, to see how many vowels in there. FYI, as a listener, go to webinar is better than Cisco WebEx to me. All right, good. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm paying full retail because I've been a customer, customer, a customer, a customer since day one. But the full retail price is pretty shocking. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm paying a little bit less than that, but yeah, it's a, it's a great platform. All right, let's, uh, let's pop out to the charts. And if you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, you can do so now. Let's first start off by taking a look at the overall market and work our way out. So if we just look at a blank chart and who was asking earlier, Don was saying, Hey, do you come in each day with a bias? And, well, my bias, I, I try to keep my bias on the the longer term trend. And so far, if we go back to a weekly chart and we put a bow tie in, we could see that the market did bow tie down. It had this little throwback rally in here. Um, I got some nasty emails saying, Dave, you're wrong. I'm like, well, okay, I could be wrong for a little bit more if it makes new highs, then yeah, I'm wrong, you're right. Um, but hey, I'm putting it out there, you know? I, at least they have the guts to put it out there. Tell it like it is, right? And then so far, we've obviously rolled over from that. So I still think this market's in a lot of trouble. For me to get excited about it, this market would have to go on to make new highs. But Dave, what about between here and there? So what, okay? Now, keep in mind that we are setup oriented. So if we do see a setup we like, what do we do? We take it, okay? CENX, CNX, okay? Those are setups that look good. So bigger picture-wise, market still looks like it's in trouble. Now, Don was asking, do I have a bias each day? And I would say maybe a slight shorter-term bias like, Right now, I feel like the market is overbought, but I also feel like it's choppy. And again, I let my database tell me what to do. If you're on a delayed service at about a week from now, you're going to see that we only had four or five stocks in the Landry list. Sometimes you might see 20 stocks in the Landry list, and I have to spend hours whittling those down to just a, a manageable list. My Landry list, as you'll see in the service, is just a list of ancillary setups or some areas that are catching my eye that might be worth taking a look at, some stocks. So to answer your question, Don, shorter term, I'm beginning to wonder, has this market become choppy? But I also let the database tell me what to do. Now, if we take a look at the P's, if we zoom it in a little bit, let's clean up the chart, go back to a blank chart. It's pullback, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So for three weeks, it's gone up. So if I'm looking to short something, let's take a look at like the OZRK. It just comes, the first one comes to mind. It could be anyone else. 
But if I'm looking to short a stock, okay, I only want to see it pull back a few days, like right here, or if I'm getting a little later, like right here. But if it starts pulling back day after day after day like it is now, let's count it out. One, two, let me clean the chart up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixteen days. So this stock is just kind of chopped around for sixteen days. Although it's pulled back, it still looks like it's in trouble. I would not rush out and put on a new position. But Dave, why would you stay short? Ah, it looks like it's still in trouble longer term. And more importantly, or first and foremost, we see each po po if I can't say it anymore, each position to its fruition. Okay. So Right now, a lot of stocks have gone up or chopped around at the least for three weeks. So we're not seeing a whole lot of setup. So what do we do? We wait. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, in the meantime, as you'll see in one second, there's some commodity-related areas that are looking okay. NASDAQ Composite kind of working its way higher in here. Back to chart out. Forest for the Trees has a little bit of that witch hat characteristic to it. Just kind of a retrace. Kind of wide and loose longer term, but over the intermediate term, still looks like it could be in trouble. Maybe take a look at a weekly chart. And until it, until and unless it goes on to make new highs, I'm not that very excited about the overall market. Okay. Now, let me interview myself. Does that mean I won't buy a stock? No. If I like a setup and I think it's the greatest setup since sliced bread, then by all means, I'll take it. Russell 2000 had, had a pretty impressive run in here. But you got to keep your eye on the big picture. It's in a pretty serious slide, 20-something percent. And by the way, the media defines an, a bear market as a 20% drop. So by media metrics, the Russell 2000 is in a bear market. Somebody's saying draw an arrow. All right, I'll draw an arrow. Uh, there you go. Okay. So Russell's still in a downtrend. Russell's kind of the poster child for what's happening internally. But on the short side, I usually like setups to only pull back for a few days. Okay. And notice that the Russell's pull back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen 17 days. Okay. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of setups. And then if you look at any of these indices, throw a dart, S&P would be a good example. And never forget about net net change. Where are we now? Let's draw a line back in time. Go back to 2014. Russell, go back to 2013. And you can see on a net net basis, we haven't made a whole lot of forward progress. So even though I'm still kind of, and I hate to label myself, kind of bearish, I'm not going to run out and sell the form because it looks like longer term, the market's kind of sideways in here. OK. Now, the other thing, too, I want to point out real quick, a lot of people might say, hey, Dave, don't we have a bow tie or it could have a bow tie? Uh, yeah, we could. OK, we could have a daily bow tie working here really soon in the S&P 500. Might even have it after today. That does not excite me because it's coming off of this very high level. That's what I would call a minor signal. OK. Yes, this might be the mother of all reversals, but I'm more concerned about a bow tie right here coming off of all-time highs or right here just off of all-time highs where this market has or potentially has a long, long ways to go if it begins to implode. Just like in 2009, I'm more excited about a market that makes a bow tie. Again, I'm not excited about a bow tie like up here, okay, because the market's still kind of in a – Looks like it's kind of topped out, and it's not at that many year lows or that much lows. But down here, we're at 13, 14, 15, 16 year lows. Eh, I might want to start paying attention to that bow tie down here. So it's an emerging trend or a trend transition. You have to be transitioning, ideally, a longer term trend. Can the signals work short term? Absolutely. But I'm looking at the bigger picture when it comes to these things. And if you align yourself bigger picture wise, you do a lot better. Like Don says, hey, do I come in it with a bias? It does, you know, yes, but that bias doesn't really change each day. My bias now, if you had to, my wife hates it when I say this because of the business I'm in, but put a gun to my head, I would say I'm bearish and I'm still bearish, okay? So market still looks like it could be a trouble, but the market can do whatever it wants. And by the way, 
keep in mind on the short side that markets often have sharp retrace rallies. If you've ever shorted a stock in here, you probably are like rolling your eyes and saying, duh, Dave. But for those of you who've never shorted a market, keep in mind that when a market sells off, it has extremely sharp retrace rallies. The shorts are very fickle. They get scared out quickly. Bottom fishers rush in. Sometimes longs of the buy and hope variety do stupid things like buy more stocks when it begins to rally, thinking they missed the, the low or the bargain or whatever. And then what happens? Bam, market rolls right back over and spits everyone out. Okay? So don't get sucked up into a retrace rally. It's okay to do nothing. It's, it's as I said last week, at Traders Expo, I talked about the merits of shorting. And then one thing I said, now, wait a minute, guys. If it's okay to do nothing. The market looks like it's in trouble. It's okay not to do anything. Just sit on your hands if you don't short stocks. There's nothing wrong with that. The good news is bear markets are a lot shorter than bull markets. So you might only be out of the market for a little while. In a little while might be a couple years, but there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm not suggesting everybody rush out and short stocks. But when the opportunities begin to present itself and the market looks like it's in trouble, then you do that. How do I feel about the market right now? Well, it's a little choppy. And I'm not seeing many setups. I let my database tell me what to do. Databases say it's sit on your hands for the most part, except for one or two issues. And I've been telling everybody at the service for a couple of weeks, hey, I think we'll get to a point where we won't see any setups. But luckily, at least because two of them work so far, but luckily we've, we've found a couple of setups that were worth taking. And we have, we're down to one potential setup. And it's possible that we might have not have any setups over the next few days or next few weeks. Who cares? Okay. You can't be right all the time. All right. Let's take a look at, and you can't always have something on and have action happening all the time. But so far, obviously a good year. Let's take a look at some of the sector action. Uh, this is where you got to be careful with the retrace rallies. Take retail, for instance. Retail is kind of all over the place. And if you back the chart out, you can see it sold off fairly hard from a double top, whatever you call that. I'm sure it's a weekly bow tie or whatever. But now it's having this sharp retrace rally. Well, it's very dangerous to try to buy right in here because the market is already very, very, very overbought. And it's also very dangerous to buy even before it gets to there. And that's one of the problems. Sometimes you're, you're, you're doing these live presentations, especially like at Traders Expo and all. Someone's like, well, why didn't you just buy over there? It's like, well, because they don't, you don't always see uh, the left side. You don't, you don't know. I'm sorry. You don't always see the right side of the chart ahead of time. You're, you have the benefit of seeing the right side of the chart. So the pattern wasn't there just yet. But the reason you don't buy here is because so far it still looks like the market has rolled over. The reason you don't buy here is so far it just looks like a retrace and it's very overbought. Okay. Now let's take a look at, let me just throw out a choppy area in here. This is semiconductors. You can see kind of wide and loose, somewhat longer term. In the shorter term, they're pretty wide and loose too. So this is why we're not seeing any setups in the semis. They're kind of all over the place. And that's okay. The secret to trading, probably the biggest secret to trading, other than being consistent, is being patient. So again, we've got one setup for today. We might have none tomorrow. Who knows? We'll see. One day at a time. So most areas are choppy. Uh, some areas like hardware, software have kind of retraced up a little bit. And Craig wants me to draw an arrow. So let's draw an arrow. Let's just grab the peak and grab the trough. Okay. Sometimes that's all you have to do. I know. It's pretty amazing, huh? And then so far, just kind of pulling back in here, bigger picture. Now, it's going up quite a few days, so there's probably no setups, but you back this chart way out, and that looks like it's in a lot of trouble. So go through all these sectors, sectors at your leisure. Some, like drugs, are looking much, much worse and are a lot cleaner. You can see pretty serious downtrend, and so far, we've just got to pull back a little bit in here. Now, I'm not going to bore you and go through too many of those. I do want to show you that the energies are shaping up nicely in here. you got a bit of a bow tie working. That's why we're going after some energies. You do have some overhead supply to deal with. 
And that's in the overall sector and on an individual basis. So again, it's like you got to take everything on an individual basis. If you see a good setup, again, then you take it. Okay. Metals and mining, same sort of action there too. Metals and mining looking pretty darn good in here. Nice little bow tie, nice little trigger in a bow tie, nice little run higher. Plowing through this overhead supply like butter, almost clearing it. So here's a case where, you know, earlier I had to go all the way back to 2009 to show you what a trend transition should look like. Here's a case where it's actually happening in real time. Isn't that a beautiful thing? This could be the mother of all lows in the metals. Write that down, okay? So far, so good. And if it's not, so what? We already got our money, some money, not all of it, but some, not as much as we want. But we already started, make, we already started making money on these stocks. So, so what? We get stopped out, we get stopped out. He who fights and runs away does what? Lives to fight another day. Craig says, example is OZRK. Yes, it's retracing, but draw the arrow, the trend is down. Beautiful, beautiful point. We were just talking about OZRK. That's in the portfolio. That's just one I just picked at random. If you draw your arrow, you know, never forget to draw your big arrows. And I know I make a lot of fun of that and doing that and all, but sometimes that's all you have to do. And if you can't draw an arrow, and I kind of picked that up from Linda Rasky because she used to always say, ask a six-year-old kid. And I would always quote Linda on that. And it reached a point where, People sort of quoted me on that like it was mine, and then a lot of people didn't even bother quoting me, and it wasn't mine anyway, so I quit saying that. So now I just say, let's just draw an arrow on the charts. And I think Linda might have been the first person to say that too, so she should probably she probably deserves credit for that. But once I once somebody called me a trend following moron because I was drawing these big blue arrows on the chart, then it stuck. And then I realized, why am I trying to outsmart the market? Why am I trying to predict every zig and zag? That's like chasing your own tail. That'll make you crazy, okay? Keep your eye on the prize. Is the market going up? Is the market going down? Is the market going sideways, okay? And avoid too much of a bias. And again, the database is going to tell you what to do. You just got to listen to it. And like in Market Wizards, you got to use intuition and not into wishing, Okay? Don't try to make something like Peter Mothy once told me because I told him, hey, Peter, I'm not sure I'm the guy of your product, product, uh, project. I might just sit on my hands and listen to weekly conference calls, and it might be three weeks before I throw out a trade for you guys. He's like, you're exactly the guy we want. Don't invent trades just for the sake of uh, making product. So let the database tell you what to do. It's okay to have a general bias. My general bias, if I had to have one again, is that the market is still in trouble. So if I see a fantastic looking short, I probably will take it. Okay. Because the market's still in trouble, it would have to be a really fantastic looking long or at the least stock such as metals and mining stock or an energy stock to trade that could trade contra the overall market. Good grief. Lots of good comments and questions coming in. All right. I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop filibustering. Let's answer some of these uh, questions. Okay, if you guys want to ask about individual stocks, feel free to start doing that now. Dave, uh, last week one of your listeners mentioned Joy, the symbol Joy, and, and the stock is up 60% today. Can you give them a double high five? Well, if it fits the methodology, they get three high fives. But if it doesn't fit the methodology, then, then as I said earlier, sometimes the market is a bad teacher, and that's the hard thing oh that looks good yeah all right i'll give them a double high five yeah that looks good absolutely they they deserve a double high five okay yeah because you had a, um sort of a bow tie well not really a bow tie it was okay it doesn't jump out at me as a setup that i would probably be all over and it does have overhead supply here so yeah it worked but it's not the cleanest most beautiful setup in the world but i hear you so far so good on that so maybe on pullbacks it might be worthwhile Joy was from the bow tie from low levels. Okay. Yeah, okay. I guess it bow tied right in here. So it's okay. Uh, it, the reason I didn't like it, it sometimes, I was thinking about this earlier today. Sometimes I look for, for perfection to a fault. So a BC in this big wad of overhead supply would have me concerned. And so far, it's kind of bumped up against it and come right back in. Uh, but Dave, that's a pretty good move. Would you be happy with that? Yeah, I'd be happy with that. But 
whenever I get into a stock, I want to be in there for a long, long time. I'm not in just for a swing trade, but to each his own. There's nothing wrong with taking one of these trades as a swing trade. If you're using my stuff and you're able to find swing trades and that's all you do and what you do, then I'm very flattered. So, yeah, high five on that one. I'll give you two high fives. All right, good job on the mail. That's fine. Uh, mail wants to know about MT. MT. Oops. I wonder what that indicator is. MT. MT. Uh, that's going to be a metals and mining or a fabricating stock or something, if I could find it. MT. Let's move this over here so we could find it. And, yeah, that looks good. Uh, steel and iron. Okay, I tell you. It would be, yeah, so it's got to pull back a little bit. Uh, we'll have to reevaluate it after the close. Ideally, you want a lower low and a lower high after the bow tie. Okay? Ideally, you want a lower low and a lower high after the bow tie. Sometimes on a wide range bar, you only get one of those. Volatility is crazy high, just like the CENX. Volatility was crazy high. Okay? It's almost over 100. Anytime you got a volatility over 100, it's a wild and crazy stock, so be careful. But, yeah, I think it looks pretty good, and if you're uh, – this could easily be a stock that I would recommend very soon. So good eye on that one, and you know what, Mel? You get a high five. SWC, that's going to be another meddling mining. It's just kind of pushing it to this overhead supply. So I would hold off on that one, maybe on a pullback. Okay, what about Calm? Calm is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> I eat fast. I talk fast. I move fast. It's amazing how large I am in spite of all that. Now, it's all over the place. Uh, you know, between 45 and 60, it's just it just bounces around like crazy. Leave that alone. Can we please look at the 30-year? Um, I don't know if I have ZB. I have TLT, which is the 30-year. What's kind of fascinating is, and we were talking about this at Traders Expo, and this was back here. Traders Expo was, I guess, a week or so ago. And so somewhere in here, we were talking, somebody came up to me and said, um, I think it was Giuseppe, was, uh, Giuseppe from Italy, my uh, friend from Italy, was talking with me. And uh, he was saying that, uh, isn't it scary what the bonds are doing? And I'm like, yeah, uh, you know, one day at a time. But bonds are going up in spite of the Fed tap at the brakes. So that's pretty scary. So I would say bonds are an uptrend. I wouldn't rush out and buy them, though. Uh, kind of all over the place longer term. But shorter term, short to intermediate term, still an uptrend. And so far, I've just pulled back, but too many days at the pullback. So uh, until proven otherwise, I'd say bonds are still headed higher for now, at least, but not worthy of a trade. So, Sol, I hope that answers your question. All right, Martin says, it's minor, Dave. Colors of your website or fighting each other. And fonts too. Get a web designer to help smooth it out. Are you a web designer, Martin? If you make your website look and feel more professional, you attract new clients easier. We all know you and respect you, but your website is not keeping you up with the service and education. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, website is not keeping up with the service. And yeah, email me offline, Martin, if you uh, do design. I'll certainly be happy to talk to you. Um, yeah, I was actually looking for a programmer, and then I decided to just do it myself. I have a bit of that entrepreneurial problem where I take charge and just do things, you know, just do it. Um, but, yeah, it's a thousand better, a thousand times better than it was. Content management? Okay, gotcha. Get a girl, pretty one. Yeah, better not. <laughs> I, have, I can't tell a story. It'd be funny. <laughs> Dave, last week, one of your listeners mentioned the symbol. Yeah, we talked about that one. ECA, uh, RVLT. Yeah, one at a time, uh, Karen, if you don't mind. ECA looks good. This is a, an oil service type of stock. It does have a little overhead supply, but that's far enough away to where if it got there, I'd probably be okay with it. Um, you know, it's kind of like a Justice, Justice Potter Stewart. I'll know it when I see it, once I see the actual setup. But, yeah, you've got a double bottom. You've got sort of a cup forming. So the only thing left would be like a one-bar pullback. And, yes, I would 
I might go with that. The only problem is I, the only thing I would do is see if I could find something that had a little bit less overhead supply. And if I didn't, it might be okay. Howard says, your stuff your stuff looks, books and website is great. Have learned a lot. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. RVLT. 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 Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a penny stock and it's kind of thin. Did you have punch in the right symbol? T G T R G P T R G P. Okay. Mike be happy to you're up next. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, it's not set up at the moment, but on the next pullback, it might be okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, utility stocks, but it would be kind of interesting to see if this would be more of an oil and gas type of stock. Uh, the HV is kind of ridiculous at 124. It does have a little bit of that Phoenix look to it. Uh, ideally, though, I'd like to see a stock come down from high levels like this and then go sideways for a long, long time. Because as I often preach, the bigger the base, the bigger the move into space. Sometimes you'll get a really nice move, but first you have like a um, – a nice base first. But, yeah, I certainly can't argue with this. This could set up very soon. Good eye on that. Whoever called it, I think I might have already deleted your uh, post, but uh, good eye. I think it was Mike. Uh, good job on that. Play bounced off the 50 daily, bow tie, messy. Service folks would look at it until 33 or less. Yeah, I think it plays all over the place, right? Yeah, it's just all over the place. I uh, I just leave that alone for now. I mean, this is something that caught my eye. Not long ago, but it was wide and loose even then. You could see it sold off here. Back here, it looked pretty good. It did implode and did have a nice little – could have made a nice little trade, but it was just so wide and loose. It's kind of like the CCL, but I decided to go with the CCL. CCL was kind of wide and loose too, uh, but not, not as wide and loose as uh, – what should we call it? And by the way, if you get on the delayed service, you can go back – I have the old archives going back 10 years, but there's a big gap in them because I need to upload the files or find a file storage place like Amazon or someplace to put them. But you can go back and look at 10 years. And if you just get a delayed service, you can at least look at the last year and change so you can see what's been going on. Um, and obviously those are going to be the most relevant. And because especially since we had uh, a sideways market, a choppy market, an IPO bull market and some short setting up. So I think you'll get a pretty good taste and you'll get to see this CCL and see me say, well, it wasn't crazy about it, but it, the setup was there and it looked okay. I think it was worth a shot. Uh, Mike, what's it all about K and D? You're welcome. Oops. Um, first thing I'm seeing is some overhead supply to deal with, and I'm going to be a little bit more picky about overhead supply in a stock that is not commodity related at this juncture. Uh, health services, for the most part. Let's see if we can uh, – I don't know if the sub-industry is going to be relevant here, but let's just try for S&Gs. Yeah, that's not really relevant. But health services, for the most part, have been in a pretty serious downtrend. Um, I hear you. It's getting ready to bow tie. Maybe if it could clear, let's say, 14 and pull back a little bit, but then you're going to have more supply up here. Uh, it's a bottom. Yes, I can't argue with you, but I'm kind of picking it apart on my own. Dan wants to know about COG. Yeah, uh, a lot of these oils are looking pretty good in here. Uh, like Robert pointed out, you're kind of in breakout mode now because you had your trend transition back here. And then you also had, here's your bow tie. Your entry would have been probably like right there on that day right there. Okay. But then, again, you've got too much overhead supply to deal with, and it's already stalling out at that. So it would have to get above 24. Also, let's back the chart out, and let's make sure that we're coming off of major, major lows. Yeah, we are. But I would go even for more major lows in the oil field stocks. But it's not bad with those caveats. Hymax for Steve. Yeah, that one's a crazy one. These golds have been hard to kind of get on. I'm sorry, that's semiconductor. I'm thinking of HMX. Uh, it looks okay. Maybe on a little bit deeper pullback, but it's sort of all over the place. Um, I think I'd pass. Uh, if this was coming off of more major lows. Uh, semiconductors are choppy. I, I just don't think it's worth a trade because it's so choppy. This is one, if you go back into service archives, I think we played this one and some of the trends along here when it was trending nicely, but it's more wide and loose in more recent years. Actually, my wife tells me I'm never right, so there's that. <laughs> 
Yeah, I got to tell you, man, you guys, you guys got a big head out there. Get married, man. That'll humble you down real quick. <laughs> oh. I think Samuel Jackson once said, uh, the secret to marriage is saying you're sorry, even though you don't mean it or something. I thought it was pretty good. All right. TRGP. Uh, yeah. Did we talk about this one? Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to wait for the next pullback though, but it has both tied. Matt says, Dave, have you looked into refining entry signals with Sega bow tie on the daily chart and then going down to the 60 minute chart to look for a bow tie and then get a tighter entry? Um, not for stocks in general, but if you're trading a market like Forex, that's less, if that's more efficient, then I think it, there's something to looking at those 60 minute bow ties when it's coming off of all high, all time highs or all time lows, or at least multi year highs or multi year lows. Um, just for S and G's, let's take a look at the P's. Dr. Seuss is channeling me today. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but let's see. And this is not a setup. Uh, well, see, you had an hourly bow tie on the P's. Now it's been kind of a, a rough ride up. But you did have an hourly bow tie back here. I guess your trigger would have been here. It's been a rough ride, but you can see, yeah, it's going to turn on an hourly chart long before it does on a daily chart. Unfortunately, you might be getting in too early, okay? So it's always a caveat. It's like, oh, let's use, let's use intraday charts to get in early, and that's fine. But we're not in a getting in early kind of market. So unless you're trading something like Forex and you're trying like, the, let's say, pound dollar, you're looking for the pound dollar, which is like down towards these uh, multi-year lows, you're looking to buy the pound on a one-hour bow tie, then knock yourself out. I think that's a good way to look at um, a trade. I may have an open position there, so I don't want to – full disclosure, I don't think that – I don't think I'm going to push the push the forex market around in here, but in case somebody ever looked at my records or whatever. Um, but yeah, take a look at like major lows, at least multi-year lows at a forex, and take a look at the 60 minute charts because it's a more efficient market. Or even an indice, you want to try to get in as early as possible if you're doing like a short, short, short-term trade. But if you're trying to get into something like C E N X, which you hope Hopefully, which hopefully you're in there for a long, long time, then then don't try to micromanage it and get in early. Somebody just emailed me recently and said, hey, I've been front running your setups lately. It's like, well, front running is legal. I can't do it personally. If I recommend something, I won't front run my own setup. But by all means, you could front run a setup of mine. Okay, let's say I say get in at six. Well, you might want to get in at 680 or 690. And that's fine if the, I'm sorry, if you get in at seven, you might want to get in at 680 or 690. Let me draw that on the chart. Let's say I said to get in um, right here, and you see it rallying intraday, decide to get in here. That's fine, but the problem is you're going to end up tripping over the nickels while going for the dollars instead of just following the system. And I've tried to beat the markets and beat the systems for years and years and years, and now I just backed off a little bit and have a bigger plan. And it's kind of like I'm almost looking at it from like almost standing above – I'm trying to think of a metaphor for this, but I'm kind of like standing on the second floor looking down to try to keep my eye on the prize and, and just kind of say, well, if we catch this right, this stock, where could it go? It could go to $30 a share. Okay, we're getting in at six or whatever, six or seven, whatever it is. So if it goes up, let's say 28, 400% run or whatever that is, then we did quite well on that. That's that's what we're looking for. Not that we're trying to swing for the fence, but we want to make sure that we have the potential to capture as much of the move as possible. And if you start looking too much at these little bitty tweaks, you're, you're going to end up tweaking yourself out of really good positions. Now, if, you, if you're intraday trading and you're trading – hourly bow ties in Forex or hourly bow ties in indices or any other of these efficient markets, then by all means do that. I think that's a, that's a cool thing to do. I would much rather trade a stock and have it go up 400% than try to grind it out in some of these other markets. But I've been known to do those kind of things, and I think it's okay to do those kind of things. 
but just don't try to beat the system, so to speak. Now, if we get into a rip roaring bull market like we were in 1999, then by, by all means, knock yourself out. Look to front run the setups, look to get in a little early. Uh, it's okay to do those kind of things, but we're not in that type of market now. The only problem that does, though, if you got to be really careful, is permanent income hypothesis begins to rear its ugly head, and you begin to think that it's always going to be that great, okay? Howard wants to know about SMRT. Uh, well, let's take a look at that. That's a retail. Now, it's going to be hard for me to get excited about a retail stock just yet, and it does have a lot of resistance up here. I guess that'd be a good problem to have. I don't know. It's not jumping out of me just yet. It would actually have to break out of this rage and then pull back. And by the time it did all that, it'd be below the overhead supply. So in a case like this, I'm going to pick it apart a little bit more than I would something like an energy or something else that's bottoming out. Also, take a look at the volume on here. Volume's a little bit low, especially for a, a relatively low price stock. So it's kind of a thin stock. So I'd be really careful on that one. Thanks for the detail to answer my question earlier and a great show. You're welcome, Matt. Hope I didn't uh, pontificate too much. Some people, somebody once told me, Dave, go on tangents. I learned more on a tangent than what you're trying to tell us directly. My problem with this stock is it's just bumping up against its old highs and now it's stalled out there. For me to get excited, it would have to take out those old highs decisively, and then I would look to play a pullback, Okay. So just kind of keep your eyes on the longer term here. And it's kind of all over the place. So I'd pass on that. Mr. Reese says, OME, what would, uh, what would the stock need to do to get you interested in a nice show today? And thanks. Oh, you're welcome. We've got a friendly crowd here. OME. Yeah, uh, what would have to do? would have to break out the new highs and then pull back. Okay. <laughs> I say that all the time, Craig. If a man is in the woods and there's no woman around, is he still wrong? And my wife, every woman, not only my wife, but every woman I've ever asked that, they just like, in unison, say, yes. <laughs> so, um, LNG, that's going to be a natural gas stock. Uh, this looks kind of interesting. You know, these natural gas stocks could be so darn tough. It's like natural gas has been bottoming forever. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think it might be worth a shot. I would pass simply because I have a little bit of a bias when it comes to these natural gas stocks because it just seems like they they just always should be bottoming out, and they never really do. Uh, it looks okay. The, other, the only other thing, I, I tell you where I would take the trade. If we were down here towards these – 10-year uh, lows or longer, then I'd be more excited about taking the trade there. Uh, but I, I can't fault you for that. I think it looks pretty good. OA for Steve. OA. Uh, is a short? Uh, it's a little thin for the short. Not too thin, but on the cusp. cusp. Ah, it looks like it's in trouble. This is one of those stealthy shorts where I hear you. Uh, I don't know if I'd rush out and recommend it. To climb. No, no, it passed. You got too much, uh, too much support, too much support. But yeah, I hear you. This is one of those uh, non-specific patterns where the market looks like it's a lot of trouble. Broke down from a base, pulled back a little bit. You got a bow tie hidden in there somewhere. Unfortunately, too much support below the market. So this would negate all of this great stuff over here. You're welcome, Martin. Good to see you. We could talk about Martin now. He just left. Poor Harvey, he dies, and CHK, the stock, is up like 40%, 50%. Oh, uh, that's the guy who died? How did he die? Well, so his death is good for the uh, stock, I guess. I don't know. Poor guy. I saw that on uh, Yahoo or something. Yeah, this could uh, set up soon, this uh, CHK. All these energy stocks are about to uh, – are trying to turn – Do you care if stocks are hitting the 89 MA resistance? I don't. I don't use an 89 MA. Accelerated into a bridge abutment. Not good. Poor guy. Smashed his car into a bridge post. Well, my wife has a bad habit when I f up, and she says, uh, "You'll do that once." So poor Mr. Arbor, he'll do that once. Oh, I need to hire a female web designer. Okay. 
Yeah, it's weird. I was going for all those uh, Mamby Pamby colors, and then I found myself saying, no, I need some excitement, some reds and some oranges and stuff. So, yeah, not sure what to do with that. But I'll, I'll take some input. You know, I, I like my old website, and then now I put the new one up, and I realize what a piece of piece of crap the old one was. Glog. Shipping stocks could be a little choppy and volatile. I don't do a whole lot of mechanical testing, but I do remember a few years back I did some mechanical testing, and shipping was one of the few areas that trend following really didn't work very well with. Now, you would never know that, and I just found it by accident. Um, and I did notice, going back in my service, that a lot of the shipping stocks that I saw uh, didn't work out. Uh, obviously, tons of overhead supply, but if it doubled from here, that's a good problem to have. So let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, it does have overhead supply here. I think I would leave it alone. I mean, again, I'm a little bit biased against the shippers, but you've got the bow tie. By the time it sets up, it's right into the shorter term resistance. And then by the time you get to the shorter term resistance, then you're right up to this longer term resistance back here. So I think I would pass. And in general, uh, shipping's really got to impress me. AD. AD, AD, PT, AD, PT. Oops, ADPT. Uh, you know, getting back to that moving average question, I'm not really worried about a moving average. I know, uh, I don't think Phil's here today, but Phil likes that 50-day moving average, and that's cool. But I don't really worry about a moving average too much. I do every now and then plot the 50. This is the 50 here. It gives me a nice little reference point, but I don't necessarily make a trade off of it. Okay, we're going to have to go to the lightning round. EXR, EXR is a possible short. It was a while back. Uh, this is one we actually had as a possible short, and it did trigger, and I decided to take it off. And now it's kind of wide and loose. Uh, let me interview myself. Does it look like a big picture top? Yes, but it's not really set up to trade. But, yeah, it looks like the mother of all tops. OA? Like we did that one. Yeah, we did that one. Okay. Okay, well, looks like uh, we're almost out of time here. we got time for, like, one more. See you. Maybe two. Nope. What about CU mean by copper? I don't have it on this screen. Oh, um, isn't there like a um, ETF that we could look at? Well, copper, the sector looks pretty good, as you can see, so far headed higher. And then let's see if there's a copper ETF. It's going to be thin. JJC? It's an ETN. That's always kind of dangerous. Uh, pretty thin, but yeah, I hear you. Uh, certainly, uh, head and shoulders bottom, kind of doing the bow tie thing off of uh, super duper lows. Yeah, uh, copper bottom. Price of oil. Let's take a look at USO. Uh, I think oil is bottoming out. I use the Jaren because it's could be a process more than event. We actually went long oil back here somewhere or whatever and got stopped out after being slightly profitable, and then I think we had a slight loss. But I would wait for, if you're looking at USO, I would wait for a bow tie before um, looking to get long. Eh, some people like oil. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, people argue. It's an ET, you know, oil's an ETN. Uh, ETN is kind of a, it's more fake, but I hear you. That's fine. You want to look at oil? I don't, I don't get too excited one way or the other. Um, yeah, it's trying to bottom out just like USO, so let it bottom out. Usually um, in, in more present years, I just avoid ETNs. Um, so all ETNs are thinly traded? Not necessarily. I mean, this one's this one's trading uh, quite a bit, uh, four billion a day. So that's pretty uh, that's pretty good. I mean, you could probably trade it. It's just that the ETNs have some inherent problems. All right, JJC, that'll probably be the last one. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Did we talk about this one already? Yeah, that's the copper. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like it's kind of bottomed out, head, shoulders. Absolutely. It looks, it, you know, it does have some overhead supply, but it's commodity, so we're going to be a little bit more lax on that. Kind of thin, though. So, But it's backed by copper, so eh, it's probably okay to trade. But again, the ETN thing, do some research on that. On, on the, the, the issues with ETN. ETN is something that's kind of fake. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, we're going to pretend to track uh, the actual oil, unlike 
like um, some of these like gold funds where they actually buy bullion, like the Canadian Gold Fund. The name escapes me. My uh, friend uh, Mac Activy um, was one, is one of the board of directors. They actually have physical gold, so I'd rather buy that, that Canadian Gold Trust, than than something like an ETN just says uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're going to uh, we're going to go up and down with copper. Yeah, that's that's, that's how we're going to do that. That's what we're going to do. All right, look, uh, my time is up. Uh, you know how much I love these shows. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you showing up. Take a time out of your busy schedule to be here. Any unanswered questions, Dave at DaveLandry.com. Any opinions on DaveLandry.com, let me know. I mean, I'm still in the early phases of doing this rollout, so um, let me know. I think I'm a light years ahead from where I want, was, but uh, I'm, I think it's, it's always room for improvement. Uh, everybody enjoy their weekend if we don't talk again. And, uh, it, and again, just shoot me an email if you have any unanswered questions. If it's a, if it's something that requires a lot of thought, I'll be happy to cover it next week. Anyway, again, everybody have a great uh, weekend, and I guess we'll see you guys and girls next week. Thank you so much.